What's up everyone? Welcome back to Random Cheese to Rank 1. In the last episode, we played four games against a pro gamer. We went 3-1 with our Zerg and Terran. In particular, I was very impressed with my Zerg. The Zerg drops being incredibly effective. Let's find out what today has in store for us. First opponent of the day is going to be a Protoss player. A Protoss player hiding the MMR. All right, wait. No, actually, I can't quite tell if he's hiding his MMR because I know for sure that I'm not and mine also didn't show. So maybe that was just a bug for me. I mean, anyway, my MMR, you know, to be honest, guys, we probably overshot a little bit in the last episode because we beat a pro player a couple times and our MMR is almost 6K. An MMR that we have struggled to get with our Terran in the practicing series. So... You know, maybe we overshot a little bit. Now, I do want to make a, a little bit of an announcement. It's not really an announcement. I guess it's... Let's call it almost an announcement. Okay, there we go. It's not an announcement of an announcement. It's just almost an announcement. Now, do you need to... Yeah, I'll probably go for the link drop build. Actually, there is another build I want to learn, but I'll talk about that later. But what I wanted to say is that last night... Well, it was last night for me. For you guys, it was two nights ago because I wanted to uh, post the video extra fast. Uh, but last night I played the tournament and the end was quite disappointing, but I learned two very important things. And it's not necessarily about the build orders, you know, I got unlucky with the build or I should have done this different in the build, whatever. Like all those excuses and things don't really matter anymore. I did learn something uh, when it came to the build and that's that I need to play more greedy against Terran pretty much because, you know, otherwise you just get too far behind. But two things that I did really learn, the first one, is that I did really enjoy the thrill of playing a tournament again. And I I honestly thought I wouldn't like it that much. I mean, I retired from pro gaming for a reason, right? It is because I wasn't really enjoying playing the tournaments. It was just giving me a lot of uh, stress and anxiety. But this time, I, I don't know. Like, even though it wasn't a great run, I did really enjoy the thrill of the tournament. So I could totally do it again. And the second thing that I learned, which is probably the most important thing of it all, is that I would have rather lost truly playing like myself uh than playing like a, a you know the highest chance way i how, how would i put this like the best meta build or the, the thing i realistically have the highest chance with or whatever because i you know with the way i played i could have totally won 100 percent. like i had it in me to win that tournament right but at the same time i I would have rather lost playing like an absolute baboon and doing crazy strategies and just sticking to how I want to play the game more than anything else, right? So what I want to, what I'm trying to say here, is that the next time, oh, that's a target. The next time, I think I would definitely like to play some tournaments again. I don't know which one or when it's gonna be or whatever, but I think I definitely want to try again. But I think I want to do it with random, and I want to stick to my, you know, my true Stark identity as much as possible and really just play like an absolute baboon i mean i you know i would like to describe it a little nicer but that's just the way i feel like i think the next time i do it i want to play the way i want to play oh there's an adept i kind of forgot that that was gonna happen to be honest for some reason maybe i should stop talking and actually make some zerklings now this could be funny because i am gonna run into oh he came back wait this was perfect on accident very very cool does he have a wall off here actually he totally could no he doesn't oh wow that adept timing oh that actually uh, <laughs> yeah, very well timed there. Now, he did click his probes away for a second, I believe. So, at least we're going to buy a little bit of mining time. I'm going to be as annoying as I can, even with this one Zerg. Like, there we go. That bought me a decent amount of time. Now, I do need to be scared of the Oracle. I'm making two more Queens. Uh, I'm going to go up to 12 Zerglings. I think I'm going to make one Spore. Like, the strategy I want to go for here, guys, is... I, I was going to talk about it, right? I, I mentioned it uh, earlier. Uh, the strategy I really want to go for is to go for a Nidus. Kind of like pretend to play macro and then go for a Nidus build. That's what I really want to do. It's a build I've been wanting to learn for a little bit. Um... And I, I, I think he's probably... Yeah, exactly. He's going to cancel that. He, yeah, he even recalls that. That makes a lot of sense. Now I have three queens here. I will have to put down... Oh, wait. Are you sure? Okay, I, I thought he was going to go for a little bit of uh, worker damage there. I'm not quite sure how many workers I need for this strategy. I think I can probably stop mining gas a little bit as well. Let's see what I can find. He's going for a robo. All right. I'll make a lair here, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm really not quite sure how many drones I want. He's going to be able to kill the larva as well if he wants to. Here, I'm going to make another spore now. I think I'm going to go up to... I want to say 40. I feel like 40 drones would be a good count, right? Like 40, I still have to make the Nidus as well. 
Okay, he might be able to get a drone here, unfortunately. Oh, can we get the Oracle? He moved that a little bit too close, I think. Exactly, there we go. All right, so now I'm going to go up to 41. Uh, so I can... Oh, I did get supply blocked a little bit there, so I can afford the Nidus. My opponent doesn't seem to have made um, a third base yet. Okay, looks like he's going to try it now. He still has one Oracle alive, which is really nice for him, else he would have lost everything. Going to make another Spore here, which means I'll also have to make one more drone. I'm just going to force him to activate the Oracle. Like, it's not the biggest deal for me. Uh, let's see. Do I need to make more Queens or more Links? Like, I don't have the money for both. That's the thing, right? More Queens or more Links. Then I guess I'll start the Nidus. Probably somewhere in the middle. I feel like that would be the most comfortable position. Maybe not the smartest position. But keep in mind, I did kill an Oracle. So that's going to make everything a little easier. Uh, I, I think the way this strategy is supposed to work, uh, at least from what I've seen, is that you run by a bunch of Links at the front and just kind of distract him. And then you put down the Nidus in the main. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how you do it. Let's see. Okay, so he sees this one Overlord. He, do, he does have an Immortal already. So that is something that we'll have to keep in mind. Let's see. When is the Nidus going to finish? Do I put every single Queen in it? Probably not every single Queen, right? Now, I, I have been getting supply blocked a lot. And it's mostly due to the fact that uh, I'm just so focused on doing this build. Because I haven't actually done this before. Here we go. I'm going to go with that now. And then I'm going to make a bunch more Overlords. So I'm going to put actually every Queen I have here uh, into that. And then I'm going to attack at the front. Exactly. Oh, he recalled for it. Okay. Well, it might be even better, actually. So... Wait, is that going to stay alive? It might stay alive. Okay, I'm just going to pop out everything over here. Like, I have the transfusers, right? So I can just uh, go in. Oh my god, this is going to be so good. I think... Okay, I'll back up from there momentarily just because the overcharge is so strong. Like, look how many freaking Zerglings I have. It's actually incredible. And I have all the queens as well. I mean, he can try to do something with the oracles, but that's going to be very freaking painful. He does have a Colossus as well. Uh, so I need to keep that in mind. But qu queens are so freaking good against the Colossus too. Look at that, guys. Oh my god. Goodness, they just get absolutely blasted. I have the links on the front. Can probably use the anti-air attack against the Colossus before the battery finishes. All right, there we go. That is awesome. Then I'll pop down another Nidus over here. And all right, this is looking like a very good strategy, guys. Especially because I executed it really poorly, most likely. Uh, so I'm very, very happy with this. And even if he's going to make more... Like, right now, I can just make drones if I want. He's going to lose his third base. I'm going to have all these queens pop out here as well, at least after the links stop popping out. I can put another Nidus in the main base in case he stops paying attention here. And there's just a crazy amount of freaking units that goes out for... Look at that! How many freaking Zerglings is that, guys? Holy cow! Like, I was waiting for the Queens to come out a long time ago, but instead, uh, it's just more and more and more links. I'm already at 50 drones, guys. I could stop at any time. And I would be very, very satisfied. I'm making more queens at home, which means I'm not going to be able to die, I think, pretty much. Let's see. I guess he's... Yeah, he's... I mean, I do like that random creep tumor in his base. Once again, I'm obviously, you know, spreading creep in front of my opponent's base instead of my own. I mean, at this point, you guys... You guys are just going to have to deal with that, okay? Okay, that, that's, just, that's just my identity now. I think I'm just going to make a bunch of overlords. Um, how many gases do I need? Yeah, I, I'm most likely just going to be making mass roaches, right? Maybe I can even do, like, a proper roach max with 1-1. Uh, one, one. Is he going to activate the Oracle for that? Probably not, right? I don't think so. Okay, I guess we'll spread some creep here as well. If he wants to attack this, I have all these uh, Zerglings ready to go. I guess I'll back over these momentarily. If he wants to go out... Okay, we will get a really nice surround there. Here we go. Yeah, I'm going to get all of those pretty much. He might have... Yeah, I, I don't want to fight against the battery overcharge, actually. I'll just save the roaches instead. Let me get roach speed, and then I'll move away with the Queens... Is, is a little sad that I used the creep tumor in the main already because it would have been nice to just pop off with that creep tumor, right? Now, I think I have a couple too many gases, maybe. Is there going to be a stasis? or No, it kind of looked like he was going to go for a stasis for a second. Oh, no. He tried to go for a stasis, but he put it in range of the freaking queens or in, in range of the spore, rather. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to make... Um... I think I'd be crazy if I made anything but roaches now, to be honest. Like, it would actually be a little crazy. And I am. I, I, I am aware of that. But, it, you know, this is not, not the right amount of crazy for now. Guess I'll just get an easy cancel on that. Make another Nidus over there. Could probably put a bunch of queens in the Nidus too. Because why not? He has one Stalker over there. Which is not going to be enough to... Oh, okay. He's going to use the Oracle, right? That makes sense. Wait, okay. For a second, I was like, wait. Is that a... You know, is that a lone Colossus? Can I actually kill that with my Zerglings here? Let's see. How many... I think I should go up to 66 drones. That makes the most sense. He does have a Disruptor. 
Um, I feel like the thing I would like to do the most here is just go for a spire and just make five million mutas at some point. Like I think that sounds that sounds about right to me. Wait, I do have a cool idea actually here. I'm gonna put a nidus down here. I'm just slowly gonna get all my niduses there. Um, around the map, I mean. And I, I'm gonna use it to get my queens in the fight if he ever lets me get it up, basically. That's the plan. Now, I do need to get a couple of drones over to that base. Wait, is that gonna allow me? No, wait. That's one Colossus. He might not pay attention here, guys. Does he have a battery? He doesn't have a battery yet. Oh, no. The battery finishes just in time. Oh, that is unfortunate, guys. That could have been absolutely awesome. Now, I guess I'll just attack over here. Let's see. Do I still... Oh, I, I was still rallying in here. No, it's just the queens, actually. Never mind. My bad. Okay, just getting a couple of drones there. No big deal. I mean, I'm going to get the queens over on the bottom. Maybe I can force a battery overcharge already. Yeah, probably not, I guess. I'll just walk out the queens here and then I'll move across with the rest of the army pretty much. Okay, here we go. These queens are going to be such a good distraction too. Like, it's not just a big attacking force. It's also a really good distraction, I think. Like, look at this. <laughs> they have max transfusions as well. Oh my god, this is so freaking cool. Look at this. I'm gonna get the links over here as well. The roach is from the top side. Gonna do a bunch of transfusions. I'm gonna kill this with the... Yo, look at the links actually popping off against those colossi, by the way. Like, that is absolutely awesome. Probably get a few transfusions on these. And he is getting absolute... Guys, this, this might be like my ultimate Zerg cheese yet. Like, he's not the coolest cheese I've ever done for sure. I mean, how could you compare this to, like, freaking Ultralist rushes and stuff, right? But this seems very freaking strong. Like, I am maxed out right now. I'm going to kill the Colossus on the high ground. My opponent seems to be trying to defend this with stasis. But yeah, obviously, there is just a little bit too much. And there we go. 5.5k resources lost against 10k. I mean, I'm playing at a high Grandmaster level. So, I mean, my opponent could be a bit lower or higher. Who knows? I'm not going to make assumptions anymore about the assumption I made in the first game of the last episode. Because that was uh, a little painful in the end. But this cheese albeit very poorly executed, seems to be very strong. Maybe I should look at a builder and how to do this properly. Or, well, to be fair, even if I didn't do the builder properly, I think the biggest problem was that I was just so focused on doing the builder properly that I got supply blocked a bunch of times. If that didn't happen, it would look a lot stronger. But, I mean, does it need to look stronger than this? I don't think so. Like, this was perfect. Really like the Spire follow-up, too. Maybe I could make the Spire a little faster, because... Let's say he makes like a lot of cannons and disruptors and I don't want to attack with roaches anymore. Then mutas are going to be a good key. But this was a fantastic warm-up game. Let's keep it going. All right, second game is against Koka, a 5,000 MMR Terran player. Now, let's see. I'm... I was actually going to say, I'm feeling like we're going to get Terran, but I was a little too late and now we got Zerg anyway. Now, what am I going to do? You know, I, I would really like to do a similar strategy against Terran, but against Terran, I think you need to be a little more tight on how to execute it. Because um, Terran has... I, I want to say, well, Protoss has, like, constant scouting. So, I mean, the last guy lost the Oracle, right? But Protoss is technically supposed to just scout nonstop with the Oracles. But Terrans has certain ter uh, certain timings where they scout. Like, for example, the first one is that they should scout around 345 with the Reaper. And I think the build might need to be a little more planned out than what I did in the last game. I, I do know that this is a very good strategy against Terran as well. So I'm tempted to do it, but I'm also a little scared. And maybe, you know what? I'm just going to see what my hands decide to do. You, you guys know me for long enough. That means I'm probably going to do it anyway and feel miserably, but somehow still win. I think that's most likely how my, or most often how my games tend to go. So I guess we'll see. Now, I went for a 16 hatch instead of a 17 hatch last time. I have been wanting to learn to actually play a proper hatch first instead of like doing, you know, the 1717 first with the, you know, the pool gas to set up for the link drop or going for the extractor trick. I think it would be good for my Zerg play in the future to actually know how to play hatch first properly. Um, and I mean, that doesn't mean that I'm going to go hatch first into macro game. I just think hatch first like this is realistically the strongest opener. So I can also do the strongest cheeses from it, right? Now, you can't really go for a link drop from this. So that is, you know, a slight downside. But I guess I guess we'll see. Uh, I do think if we ever want to participate in tournaments as random and do, you know, not really well. Like, I'm not going to win the tournaments unless I, like, really commit to practicing, of course. But, I mean, we can have some really magnificent tournament runs if I just manage to get my Zerg and Protoss a little bit cleaner. You know, work on my Terran as well at the same time. But obviously, the other two races are going to be lagging slightly behind. It's really not that much anymore but they are still lagging slightly behind so uh there is that let's see oh i probably should have made an overlord with that larva there's gonna be one reaper on the way 
I, I'm I'm quite tempted to just make uh extra set of Zerglings. I think I've talked about this before, just because it, it makes it easier to deal with the Reaper. And like I might not even really have to deal with it in a way. Because dealing with the Reaper is a little annoying. Especially when I'm trying to talk to you guys about all my deep strategy and stuff, and then you have to do this. Like it is a little bit annoying. Good target fire by him. Probably just gonna lose one Zergling if I micro properly. Should be completely fine. And I'm gonna pull these back for now. There we go. I mean, he's almost gonna lose that to the freaking queen. Needs to be careful there. And this is a little bit of a mistake from him. I can tell this from a Terran POV. Where if the Reaper is low HP, you can't block the Creep Tumor. Because if you go in, uh, like you need to heal first, right? And that's gonna take a little bit of time. Now he's gonna be trying to deny this drone. Uh, I could also take the forward hatch. I wouldn't mind doing that actually. Normally I would, but I'm gonna take the forward hatch here. Uh, maybe it would even be stronger for the... Oh, wait. Dude, he almost lost that. He needs to be careful. He might misclick on a Zerkling or something. Oh, here we go. No, <laughs> that would have been so cool if it actually happened. Okay, I'm going to start a wave more of drones. Uh, I, I could probably... Yeah, I think I should wait for my extra queen. Um, just so I can put the creep tumors out safely, I suppose, right? Like, I don't think I want to uh, go in right away. I'm going to make a couple Zerklings. I haven't seen Hellions yet, I believe. Okay, there's a third command center there. Just so you guys know, that doesn't really mean anything um, in ZVT. Like, that, you know, that, that third is supposed to be there. Like, the third is always going to be fast against Zerg. Oh, well, if, if it's not there, they're doing something, like, particularly aggressive. I guess that's the best way to put it. Now, I do need more and more Queens. I, I, I wish that I had, like, a... Wait, could I do, like, a quick... Nah, I think it's a little too greedy, right? Yeah, I'm not going to go for the run by yet. I, I wonder if he scouted my extra base yet, by the way. You, you would imagine that he that he has, but he, I guess you never know. Let's see, do I need more gases than this? Probably not, right? Oh, he's going to try for the run by... Oh, that's a mistake. Exactly. He's going to lose one heli in at least for it. Maybe even another one. And that is definitely a good start. Now, I barely have drones, by the way. Like, I'm very low on, on the drone count. Wait, can I maybe... I can probably get a good, pretty good surround here if he still... No, he was... Okay. Let's see. I, I'm really just trying to bait him out as hard as I can here, to be honest. Doesn't look like he's falling for it, though. Okay, let's put a little more creep. I, I guess... Mate, well, guys, I just thought of something. This build might be perfect for me. Because you don't have to put that much creep. Because I want transfuses on the queens. <laughs> guys, guys, I finally have an excuse to not put creep down. Let's freaking go. This is awesome, guys. I love this build already. I can't believe it. After after all, all you know, I don't know how long it's been. All those months of not putting down creep tumors. We finally have a freaking excuse. Oh, this is, this is what I've been looking for all this time. Oh, my opponent does have a lot of freaking... Uh, what's it called? A lot of freaking Hellions coming across, right? Like, that looked like a crazy amount. Okay, so here goes the Nidus. I guess I'm going to execute it the same way. Where... Oh, no. This was also a really bad initial hit for me there. I was going to... I just attack him at the front. Let's see. Is he, is he going to try to go for it? He'd be pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. This is perfect for me. Here we go. He's going to lose those Hellions if I micro these correctly. Here we go. Yes. Oh, this is awesome, guys. Here we go. He's going to lose all of the Hellions. This needs to go uh, up front, though, for sure. And then I'm just going to put down the Nidus right in his face over there. Attack at the front. And now I guess we're going to see if this is good enough. He's going to pull the SCVs instantly. Um, which... Oh, he, wait. He went for Banshees? Without uh, doing anything with them? That's, that seems a little crazy, actually. I mean, I, I, I guess he's doing what he's doing. But that's that does seem a little crazy. Yeah, I'm not going to... I don't want to lose all of these Zergings, of course. So I'm going to take it a little easy. Okay, let's move this one back. He is going to scout that. I don't think he's going to be able to kill that in time, though. So he should be completely fine. In fact, this is pretty risky to do with the Banshees because Banshees do suck a little bit against uh, against Queens. Okay, I do need to get those uh, Creep Tumors down a little faster. Guess I'll just get closer and closer with these. At some point, we'll put down another Nidus in the main. Let's see what the Queens can do here. Oh, he's going to lose one of the Banshees? Oh, I think barely not. Okay, I really need the Queens to do most of the work here. I wonder if I can... Uh, snipe the Banshees from the low ground with this. Oh, he's gonna lose one of those, I believe. Banshees or Queens do have an insane range against air. Like, absolutely insane. Let's get these Creep Tumors a little closer. That Hellion is finally gonna die, seems like. Oh my goodness. Now, let me put these Queens in the Nidus as well. Here we go. And we are gonna be able to breach the Natural. Now, what, do I need to do anything else as a follow-up? I'm, I'm not even sure. Like, is this, is this already enough for me? Maybe I should be making drones now? I feel like making drones does sound very reasonable, right? 
Man, I wish I could. Oh, wait. I'm gonna get in here. Oh, this is massive, guys. I'm gonna get in here. And now, this is gonna have even more queens inside. Look at the queens popping out. Wait, where's my overshare? Do I still have one? I do still have the overshare. I have no idea where it went. Uh, I know it is somewhere, though. I guess it is, it is coming from downtown right now. Here we go. There is the beautiful overshare. And we're going to be able to take down the Banshee guy. I'm literally killing it with mass freaking queens. I, I don't even have all the queens in the night. I'm just... Well, I guess, yeah, I mean... Because I might as well make some stuff behind it. Well, th this is freaking fantastic, okay? Just look at my queens popping off. Once again, guys, this is the same story as in the first game. Mediocre execution at best. But looks like it's still going to get the job done. Well, let's see. How many freaking links do I have here? The answer is uh, more than enough. Okay, wait, I'm gonna kill my own queen. No, okay, he's gonna leave it alone. There we go. Like, yeah, really not not super happy with the execution, but there's just so many freaking units with strategies like this. Like, my queens are all over the place. I didn't rally into my knightess properly. I didn't bring my overshare. And it's still just gonna be an absolute wash. I mean, I guess... Or no, someone corrected me that wash is the... Is the is the wrong word to use in the situation. I do need another word then. We'll just say absolute carnage, okay? This was absolute carnage. Look at the units lost. They're almost double from a ZVT. And I mean, I'm not going to do it again in this episode because I kind of want to learn like a proper build first because this was a mess. And despite this these being two awesome victories, it does hurt me a little bit to have my builder so messy. Like I really want it to be a little more clean. But man, these builds are strong. Like if I can execute them like this first try, no build. I mean, we did have a decent early game in both games, I suppose, but it was nothing special. I really just defended with my queens and that's it. But it looks incredibly strong. Like, this guy didn't even come close to holding this attack despite me messing it up. And this is Grandmaster level. This is freaking insane. Let's go to game number three. All right, game number three is going to be against a Zerg player. Now, I hope we don't get... Let's see. Oh, we get Zerg again. Okay, I was going to say, I hope we get another race because it would be, you know, really fun for the variety here. But it is what it is. Now, I... Let's see. Do I tell my race against this Zerg? Um... I I don't think so. I feel like ZVZ, it is relatively easy to defend stuff if you just play normal. So I think I want him to be a little scared at the start, right? Like sometimes it, it's better to tell my race because then my opponent does a certain scout timing or whatever. That is if they trust me because very often they don't trust me. I, I always say this, or at least I think I've said it a couple times, but the funniest part about it is, is that when I had a name called Don't Trust Me uh, in these... Excuse me, when I was playing random in the speedrunning series, that's when they trusted me the most. So, yeah, I just, I, it's kind of hard to predict, right? Like, it's probably just a really big coincidence of who you play against. But I think for this strategy that I'm going to do, it makes sense to not tell my race. Now, what I'm going to do here is my plus one burrow roach attack. Now, you have to bear with me a little bit here. Yeah. Since I'm playing random, it is going to be hard to have a really big arsenal of builds for every matchup, right? So, what I want to do is just make sure that I have at least one really cool cheese that I like per matchup, and then I'm going to expand from there. Now, obviously, with the experience of my entire YouTube channel, which is basically me cheesing with every race for the past, what has it been, like, year and a half or something, right? It's been a very long time that I've just been weaving on everyone on the ladder. Uh, I do have a decent amount of builds already in my repertoire, so I guess we're just going to add more and more. But I do want to make sure that I have my plus one Burrow Roach timing just as as you know as perfect as it can be um it's probably already not realistically the best strategy ever but you know i really still want it to be as good as it can be especially because it's something different it's something that no one uses as a zerg player uh, and that just makes it more awesome to actually try right so i haven't seen any unit move out on the map yet um i guess i would have seen zerglings by now right yeah i'm just gonna start the evolution chamber already add a couple more drones I think if I could drone up to the drone count I want without having to make, like, a single Zergling, that would make this build extra strong, right? Like, that that just sounds awesome to me. I still haven't made a, a single Zergling, so that is really nice. He is going to see the queen. I'm going to... I think I need 25 dr or 24. No, 25, because I, I want 23 drones, I believe, in total. Or is it 22? No, actually, actually, I think we're good. Yeah, I'm going to keep it at 24 for now, uh, which means I already have the perfect drone count. I'm going to start a gas. Or is that... No, it's a little suspicious, but I guess it is It is just kind of what I have to do, right? Um, I'm going to make a roach war in here as well. I guess this game is just going to be a test to see if 
I make it obvious enough if, if he's going to be able to counter it still, right? That's the plan. So he is going to see the evolution chamber, but he might not see the Roach Warren, which would be really big news for me, right? Yeah, so he's going to see the evolution chamber. Hopefully he doesn't see the Roach Warren, though. Let's see if this... Yeah, this queen is going to be able to deny it, which is awesome. And now I'm going to use another thing that I've seen or I realized before in my past games, and that is that I can start putting out creep because I already have enough larva. Now, this is probably not a permanent thing, but I'm going to try to spread as much creep as possible in this short amount of time, right? That is that is what I want to do here. Let's see, I don't have... I think I'm going to be able to make five roaches once exactly. Yeah, five roaches are going to come up already. They are going to have plus one attack, and they're going to have burrow. Let's see, let's put as much creep as we can. At some point, I won't have to make more uh, creep tumors, because the creep tumors I have will just be good enough that, you know, that will just be enough already. Now, he might try to attack me with those links. Let's see if he's going to go across. He is going to move across. Uh, the only thing that could be a little scary is, like, a potential base trap. Wait, he's going across with bailings as well. Okay, yeah, this could be quite something. I'm going to keep these on the ramp for now. Uh, let me let that roach pass. Okay, looks like he moved back. Could also, yeah, okay, he moved back with everything exactly. That's what I thought. Burrow is not finished yet, but it's going to finish at a decent time. God, this is this must look like such a weird strategy from the opponent's POV, right? Like, it's super fast roaches, and then there's creep before the timing of the lair has even arrived. Now, plus one attack is going to finish in five seconds, so uh, that is quite important for sure. Now, good thing for me, uh, I have burrow on these. Let's see, I can probably burrow the drones as well. I'm going to burrow them already, actually. And here we go, just in case. I mean, these roaches are going to trade super efficiently here. Hey, oh, I pressed the wrong button there. That's a little unfortunate. Here we go. Okay, let me burrow that one and burrow that one. It is a little hard to uh, focus on multiple fronts at once, but there we go. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to kill a ton of units for free, and then I'll burrow out of here. That's the plan. You see, okay. And now I imagine he's going to be making a spore. Okay, let me unburrow the queen as well. And Umbro, this one, Roach. And then I'm going to try to go for it again. Exactly. Now, he has a Roach Warren already. That does suck. He even made a freaking Spine. Okay. I guess he really is just going for a pretty committed attack over here, right? Okay, let's see if I can micro this one back. I mean, if I could kill his uh, Roach Warren, that would be ideal. Like, that's what I want to go for. If I can kill the Roach Warren, then it's going to be all right for me. Now, is this a build I could ever transition from? That I kind of doubt, to be honest. So that's... Yeah, that's going to be the most questionable thing here. Guess I'll just burrow these momentarily. Wait, I need to just burrow these ones, of course. I burrowed all the roaches on the map. Now, what the hell is the follow-up going to be? I, I, I'm making drones now. It is obviously a little questionable to be making drones. My opponent's clearly just spamming roaches like freaking crazy. Uh, I think I'm going to go for an armor upgrade, actually. And I'm also going to be making link speed. Okay. I, I guess he doesn't really still want to move out, right? I, I, okay, wait. I started the wrong upgrade there for a second. Okay, I'm going to make more drones. Keep in mind, my opponent did make a lot of spine crawlers. And I guess, yeah, he doesn't have plus one. So that is another advantage that I have. Okay, I'm, all, I'm getting really close to killing that. Let's see, he's going to move out now. I will be able to uh, micro uh, the roaches. Well, actually, I can burrow all of these already. Here we go. He might have an overseer coming, so I need to pay very close attention to that, of course. I think the ideal strategy for me... Yeah, he's actually just going to fall. Man, this is so cool that this is actually working, right? Or, well, working. It kind of looks like it's working for now. I guess that's the best way I put it. I'm going to unburrow these as well. He does have a spine crawler. Keep in mind, I do have the... Uh, or a spore crawler, rather. Keep in mind, I do have the plus one uh, attack advantage, right? Yo, the burrow micro is popping off right now, guys. Look at that. All these roaches are going to stay alive on super low HP, man. This is actually awesome. Okay, I guess we'll just burrow all of them again. Look at the traits we're getting. And now I'm going to unburrow on top of his roaches. Burrow that one again. Guys, how freaking cool is this right now? Oh, my God. I do think I should probably start a lair here. I'm going to make a third hatch behind this, too. Like, I wonder if... Oh, I guess I'll just damage that a little bit for free. Okay. And now I'm going to burrow all of them again. Uh, let's see. I have 44 drones. I, I guess I'm mostly scared of a lair. Like, if, if he has a lair coming up, uh, that would be a little annoying, right? Is it time for me to go back yet? I think it might be time for me to go back yet. I started a bunch of Zerklings. I just hope they're going to be in time. Um, and that is going to be it for this attack for now. Like, I just don't want to lose this third base. I do think it, the links are... Yeah, the links are going to be a little too late, unfortunately. Uh, that does suck for me. He still doesn't have upgrades, but my upgrade is also not finished yet, I believe. So that is a little unfortunate for me. I'm going to start an extra round of queens here. And then I should be able to defend with the reinforcements coming in, I believe. Exactly. There we go. So I'm going to kill those. And then I will 
I, I have noticed that my third army hotkey or my third camera hotkey has been consistently off for whatever reason. I don't really know why. Uh, I was planning to go for like Ravager Zergling, but now I'm kind of tempted to go for Mutas more than anything else. I'm going to start one wave of drones. For some reason, both those queens started on the same hatchery. That's a little weird. Let's see. The upgrade is finished. Exactly. Now I'm going to be able to cancel his hatchery in return. He still doesn't have an upgrade. Like, keep in mind, I did kill his evolution chamber earlier, right? So now do I have to make spores yet? Maybe. I'm going to cancel it one more time. There we go. That's actually a kill, not even a cancel. Um, I'm not that great at reading ZVZ. I, I need to keep that in mind. Like, ZVZ reading is not my, you know... Uh, my the best part about my gameplay so to say so i don't know if this is like a road speed timing or what exactly this is going to be like that i cannot really predict i, I would i wouldn't be surprised if he's going to try to attack me with a roach timing of some sort i think it makes a lot of sense to do that what's really good for me here guys is that i already have the spire finished uh which means oh that there's too many overlords here in case he has a i didn't even think about that by the way i was like he doesn't have anti air so we're fine but if he makes a spire then that could actually be a problem um what was i gonna say yeah i do have the spire already so even if he attacks me now it is probably gonna be too late now i do need to start road speed of course now i'm just happy okay he does a plus one attack now that's important i'm just happy that my upgrades are so freaking good right like i'm gonna have two one melee even which is pretty you know uncommon to have but it is gonna be very very useful now i don't have as many drones as i thought so i do need to keep that in mind uh, he's moving all of his overlords back because I am going to have a bunch of mutants, of course. Can probably still catch a good amount of them, to be fair. Uh, and I guess we're just going to be playing mass mutants here. Let's see. Okay, it's just queens. Okay, that's what I thought. I, I would I would imagine that he's going to go play... Um, what's it called? That he's going to play Hydralisks. I feel like that is the most expected thing that he can do here for me. I made an Overseer at home, so he can't trick me with Tunneling Claws. I think that's a good idea as well. Should probably keep a bunch of Roaches here, just in case, right? Let's see, I'm going to make sure he doesn't take a fourth base without me knowing about it. Now, this is this might turn into a pretty long ZVZ. I really thought he was going to attack us already, but it seems like uh, he is not interested. So, <laughs> I guess uh, maybe we should just be playing the economy game. That is just an Overseer. Going to make more and more Mutas. Probably get... Oh, wait, I actually thought I already... I was going to say probably get plus two attack, but I didn't even have plus one yet, so that's a little bit of a mistake. Going to go for plus one armor then. Let's see. Is there a spore here? There is... Wait, does he really not have any drones? No, I, I, I think he was just waiting for the spore, right? I feel like it... I, I'm not buying it right now that he doesn't have, like, a single spore crawler. Like, he must have a lot more. Now, I could... If he's not going to go for bailings, I could go for, like, a Ling Ravager composition, which would be pretty awesome. Now, this is going to be a really good way to do some damage here for me. Because the the uh, bounce of the glaives, uh, you know, is able to kill drones as well. And see, he does have too many queens. I've made the mistake before underestimating the queen uh, when it comes to, you know, fighting against my Vita. So I'm not going to make that mistake again. Did I get a road speed? I did get a road speed. That's quite nice. I have a decent amount of mutas. I think I want to go up to a hive. Uh, and mostly for the reason that I think most of the time where zerg players lose these muta games is because the opponent really goes for the late game here and then it kind of ends up being like uh, wait now i have more than enough mutas though like this is a lot of mutas here we go i'm not going to underestimate the queens again but this time we are going to have enough to kill it so he needs to be careful he used all of his transfusions there but yeah most of the time it becomes like one of those late games with vipers and investors and stuff so what i'm going to do here uh, is I'm just going to pull my larva for now. I can always spend it last minute. I guess that is just a, a big benefit of Zerg, of course. Uh, and I'm going to go for Ultralisks. I know it sounds a little crazy, but I think it's a cool idea. Uh, oh, I only have... For some reason, I was trying to get the armor upgrade from my spawning pool just now. That was not uh, not my greatest moment ever, but it is what it is. Now, I could probably use these links to deny the fourth base a little bit. I would imagine that my opponent has a hive on the way already. Like, I can't be 100% sure, but I feel like there is probably a hive on the way. Now, realistically, the best way for me to win this game, I think, would have been to... Um, what's it called? To go for, like, a big roach attack. Like, I had really good upgrades. I could have just gone for a big roach attack and... Um, 
you know, maybe finish it off with like 2-2 two, two or something like that. Like whatever timing would have worked really, but probably would have been 2-2. Two, two. Uh, but instead, I'm going to go for Ultralist because I am me. So if you're wondering why the hell, then <laughs> that's why. Because I am me. Now he's trying to take a base over here. I'm not going to tolerate that, of course. I guess I might as well take a fifth base as well. You know what? I'm going to make Overseers at the front of his base. And I'm also going to get Overlord Speed here. Maybe I'll even make a Spore. Like I, I, I am a little afraid of... Uh, you know, tunneling claw roaches coming into my base, to be honest. Here we go. Make sure to get adrenal glands as well. Obviously going to be very important. Wait, I could maybe... I guess I'll just burrow a bunch of links over here as well. And then I'll bury them here too. So whenever he does take the base, we'll be able to shut it down instantly. You know, I do have to say... I might not have executed this to perfection. Oh, that is an overseer for some reason. Okay. Good thing I got my... Oh, never mind. I was going to say, good thing I got my splits. <laughs> and then I made a mistake instantly. Let's see if he wants to try. Exactly. Okay. So I pretty much drained his energy already. I mean, losing some mutas... Actually, some losing some zerglings would also be very nice, I have to say. I'm going to burrow them here again. And then I'll probably just... Yeah, I'll just use it to snipe that. Like, I, I need supply to make ultras later, right? That's the thing. Um, and, okay, this, it's I, I do think it's really crazy that I'm going for ultras, I have to admit. But I really like the strategy because my opponent's playing so freaking passive. And I think it is awesome that I went for this. Let's see. He picked one in the middle over here, right? Yeah, exactly. So we'll get that one away. He's going to... Uh, choose the red HP one, which is a little bit of a mistake. Let's see. Oh, he has attack. Guys, the ultras are only just now on the way. Oh, I need to be careful with this. We could get a really big fungal here. Oh, that is a super nice fungal. All right, here we go. Another one. And I mean, the mutas are coming back already, guys. Like, I know he's trying to push forward here, but the mutas are here already. And more importantly, the ultras are on the freaking way. I feel like this is going to be good enough for me here, guys. I mean, call me crazy, but I like what I'm seeing here. He's going to lose all of these roaches, I think, the moment these ultralists pop. I'm not going to have the upgrades for them yet. That is true. I got more legs. And here are the ultralists, guys. These roaches are going to be getting chomped. Look at that. Tell me that is not absolutely beautiful. It's doing so much freaking work i did lose drones but my ultralist timing has paid off massively and that is so cool uh, i can't believe going for ultralist was actually a good choice here guys they finished just in time i have really good upgrades on them as well uh, which is obviously quite important now these are just going to go into the main base i'm not quite sure yet what i'm going to do with these um with these mutalists to be honest but i guess we'll figure it out look at the ultralist though they're just going to be killing everything i think i'm going to make a couple more uh, just to fend me wait I'm, I'm yoloing this he might not be paying attention exactly there we go i think i'm actually yeah i'm gonna get both vipers here because he wasn't paying it look at these ultras oh my goodness these are not dying to these roaches right now and this base is getting absolutely mopped up as well i'm gonna have these two ultralists on the defense this is my favorite zvz game yet i think like this is freaking awesome my build was cool the plus one burrow roach timing worked out perfectly like i actually got ahead from it even though I had to transition, which is freaking crazy. And then I made Ultras perfectly in time. And this mid Grandmaster Zerg is getting absolutely eaten up right now by these freaking Ultras. I mean, I'm going... He killed a lot of workers, but I'm going to go back up to 63 Durons already. No GG is called. And there we go. 17 supply left. And look at the units lost here, guys. Pretty much plus 50%. 13.6k against 21k. And this might have been my best ZVZ game yet. And so far, we just keep on winning, guys. I think we're almost almost at 5.9k MMR with our random which is freaking crazy especially because we got Zerg and not Terran most of the games now I do think we haven't gotten Protoss a single game yet or no we already did three episodes yeah we definitely got it in the first episode just not in the last two but this was just an absolutely beautiful episode. This uh, this video was filled with absolutely amazing cheeses. Like, I love the Knight cheese against both Protoss and Terran. Yeah, actually, in every single matchup, the Knight is against both Protoss and Terran. And then this freaking, you know, Burrow plus one Roach attack into Mutas, into Ultras against Zerg. I couldn't be happier with this episode, so I'm going to leave it at that. Hope you guys had a fantastic time as well. If you did, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.